for me, just figuring out ways to serve and to give back. That's been for me. I love, I really, really, truly love how you worded that because I thought the same, I think the same way too, because a lot of times early on, I'm like, what am I doing? Like, am I doing my purpose? Am I serving? Yeah. But I had to learn, like, I have to do whatever role they ask me to do, whether it's the girls, mm -hmm. whether it's the coaches, whoever, to be a servant leader. And that's how I kind of started to look at it towards the end. Like, I'm here to serve them. Like, I already had my experience. I played, did whatever. I'm here to serve my my past opportunities yeah. to tell them, like, hey, this is how it can shape out for you or do it as long as you're yeah. doing it you know, with the mm -hmm. right heart in mind. And it is like, this role is completely a servant leader role because like you said, it's not a whole bunch of pay. It's not a whole bunch of this and that, but it's not even about that. It's about right. doing doing what God planned and purpose is for you. Mm -hmm. And so I loved yeah. how you just said that servant leader role. And that's exactly how I felt. Like once I mm -hmm. kind of learned my purpose a little bit, like, no, this is this is literally not only to serve them, but to serve the Lord as well. And so yeah. I, oh, like, yeah. like, I loved how you, how you worded that and said no, that. No. That's really good. You know, I think as a, people ask me all the time, uh, hey, I want to be a GA. What's your advice? You mm -hmm. know, it's good to have some skills and be able to do all types of stuff, but your why has to be really, really big. You know, even as a coach in general, but you have to have that mindset of, of knowing why you're in this position and, and why God brought you here and, and what you've been called to do. Because um, if you if you try to chase the money or the, the glitz and the title, Right. You know, that stuff's going to run out. You know, that's not going to fulfill you after a while. So just like you said, it's important to just know, know who you are, um, mm -hmm. what you're good at and why you're doing it and who you're doing Absolutely. it for. So that's, Absolutely. that's, you brought us some good points. I really like that. But all, to piggyback off that a little bit too, I think it's also important, like for me and you, we're, we are the only GAs for our school and we're at a mid-major school. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, early, very early on, I talked to a lot of like power five GAs. And they're like one of six or one of four. And they are categorized like, oh, I only work on this part right. of this and that. And I tell them everything I do. And they like, you do all of that. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's not glitz and glamorous of the big, the, you know, the big power file. But I love like how this program is up and coming and everything. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, with y'all. I see y'all had got a, a huge recruit uh, committed yeah. the other day. Yeah. And I seen that and I was like, that's good. You know, I and yeah. it's just being in touch with other people that is very like-minded as you. And so uh, as us and everything. And so that's, I just wanted to piggyback off of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another question I have is like, how important is mental health to you in uh, college basketball right now? Uh, I mean, it's something that we're starting. Fortunately, we're starting to have some, some serious conversations about it in athletics and in college basketball, you know, where we've started to have conversations um, I think it's time we take those conversations a little further. Um, and for us as coaches as well, we talk about taking care of the players and, and which is super important, taking care of the athletes, and making sure mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, they're well taken care of. But a lot of times as coaches, we forget to take our, take care of ourselves. Yes. Um, and if we're not in, if we're not in the proper frame of mind, how we possibly take care of others and be that transformational leader for someone else. If we're not prioritizing our mental health and our mental well being, um, you know, that's just one thing, especially with this crazy, I just, you know, the coaching industry, especially on the division one level, it's just, it's so busy and it's stressful right. and it's chaotic and it's just, it's never ending, never but ends, yeah. you have to find time to take care of yourself because if you don't, then who's going to take care of you? You know, if you don't take care of you, then who will? Um, and it's up to us to be at our best on the floor and off the floor. But yeah. that doesn't happen if we don't value our mental health and, and take care of ourselves mentally. Um, so it's just, you know, I love that we're having some conversations about it. These, I think COVID forced us to have some conversations about it. But right. I think we need to continue to be genuine in these conversations, and, and especially as coaches, you know, it's, there's no need to sugarcoat anything. We all we all have our things that we struggle with. So it's it's good to be able to share those things because there are people that are going through those similar struggles. So mental health is something that um, it's it's key because if you can't be as successful uh, physically or emotionally or spiritually, if mentally you're you know, you're not where you need to be. Um, so that, that's a really good question. And it's something that I hope we continue to discuss and and learn and figure out as we grow as coaches and in this this unique business and profession that we're in yeah i know that that's this is literally like one question that i ask in almost all of my mm -hmm. interviews because i want to know everybody you know different insight and i do ask a lot of assistant 
like older coaches, like, hey, how do you juggle your social life and having a family? You know, we're young, and but like, how do you have a whole family and still have to worry about 15 girls and then the coaching staff and recruits, you know? And so that's one thing I always ask them in. And they do. They say, you got to take time out for yourself, do things that you enjoy and everything like that. So I'm happy that, you know, with, with what you were saying. Last yeah. question. Uh, what are like your areas in growth as far as basketball for next season for you? You know, this is something that I've been having a lot of conversations about it. And it's so fascinating to me. The way that student athletes and really people in 2024 learn and, and <laughs> kind of how they soak up information is different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm so fascinated by how can I deliver the most essential but detailed information to student athletes in the most efficient way possible. Um, I think it's it's on the court, it's in film, it's in recruiting, it's how can, because I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. In these days, a 45 minute film session doesn't really work you know right. kids just and people they just we just thinking something else correct and I love how some coaches say you know oh well it's all the screens and technology but guess what we're on them too you know all these coaches <laughs> we're, we're on we're on our phones and our our memories are pretty our brains kind of want to move to the next thing quickly too so I'm just really fascinated by being able to be efficient in the information that I'm providing to student athletes or to other people because I think sometimes if you – we because especially on our level, the Division One level, we have so much access to so mm-hmm. much information. And a lot of times we want to give all of it to the student athletes and we want to give them as much as possible. But when we do that, sometimes we forget and the student athletes aren't understanding what we're trying to emphasize. Because in this game, you're not going to be great at everything. You're going to give something up. So what do you want to emphasize and what do you want to be really, really strong at? And I think it's important that – the delivery of the message is is efficient because it's not always the message that's wrong. It's sometimes the delivery can be too long or, it, you know, it may not be relatable to that specific human. So I'm just very fascinated in that because, I mean, I know you know, but it doesn't matter what we as coaches know. It's a, it, what, what matters is how can those student athletes absorb that information and go apply it. Um, and in basketball, you know, the, the game is so different now. You know, we're playing with a lot more freedom, a lot more concepts, it's a lot faster pace for, for a yeah. lot of teams. Um, yeah. But if our student athletes, if their minds are clogged while they're on the floor in practice or in games, then their feet are going to stop. And if their feet stop and they start thinking about things, then we're in trouble, right? Because the game of basketball is so quick. You don't have time to just have time. sit and think and question yourself. You have to rely on you know, those habits that you've built and those instincts. So um, just figuring out how can we deliver that information that's that's essential, that's detailed, but be efficient in that delivery so that the student athletes can absorb it and go perform on the floor at the highest possible level. That's a good question. That's a, what, what about you? What's your area that you're trying to grow in? No, that is that is definitely a good answer. And you just like, blow my mind a little bit because I never you know I don't think about stuff certain ways until somebody yeah. says something I'm like okay that's kind of what something meant or somebody else told me or something yeah. I know for me personally I think one thing I want to be better at is like the x and o's of basketball mm. I think you know as far as relationship and talking with players and being relatable to them I'm kind of at that point at least with my girls and so mm-hmm. now right. being able to like you said with the delivery of messages being like okay like what should I have done in this situation and be able to tell them right then and there in a more of an X and O type of situation? Like if you just make this small critique, and this is going to help your game in so much mm-hmm. a different way, you know, and so just learning different things about how to beat different screens and different sets. And we play so fast now. So understanding our offense even more. And so I think that's one right. thing for next year. I definitely want to be better at and just learning the games from an X and O more point point of view. Yeah. That's that's what I'm so thankful for our our staff here. I mean, I, I always you know yeah, I'm glad they don't charge me for every question that I ask because I will not be able to pay them because our staff here is just they're always doors are open. I ask you know I come and sit in their offices and ask questions whether it's X's and O's related or recruiting or just in general just life questions. And I'm swear I'm just I'm super blessed to be where I am and I know you're in a really really good yeah. spot at Murray State as well. Um, but I'm just so thankful for those coaching staffs like we have here that 
where the doors open and they're willing to share what they know and what they believe in. And uh, this just, it's really, really special. And I'm just super fortunate to be here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's always interesting when, um, you know, as coaches, we, we're, we're prideful in what we know, right? Like we, we, what we know and we believe in how this style of play or five out or whatever. Hey, this is, I'm a five out coach or whatever. It's always interesting to talk to coaches. Like you mentioned talking to older assistants who are evolving some of the ways they, they think about stuff or how they adjust this stuff. But no, it's, it's good. We're, we need to be lifelong learners. If we're not lifelong learners in this, in this coaching game, because it changes every basketball the game, the game is changing very, very rapidly. So mm-hmm. it's fun to just to ask questions and to learn. And that's, I think that's the biggest thing that I was just super fortunate for our staff is um, they probably get super annoyed, but they always leave that door open and let me ask questions. So I'm going to ask them. Yes, absolutely. And I'm the same way. I continue to ask questions and ask questions mm-hmm. until I can't. And like you said, I want to continue to evolve because once I think I know everything, well, I don't need to be doing it, you know. And so right. that's what my mm-hmm. assistant coach says. She's like, I don't care how old I am. I'm always going to learn. I can learn from younger, older. It don't matter. I always want to learn. And so um, that's how she is. But I really, really appreciate it, Griffin, being on this call with you, being able to learn and get some great insight from you and, and having you on my uh, Zoom. Um, I appreciate you, and I know South Alabama do, and then I'll be I'll be rooting for you and, and watching y'all next season, and we'll definitely be in touch way, way more and just kind of piggybacking off each other because I really I really enjoy having it, you on my Zoom meeting today. So I really Oh, for it. sure. Yeah, yeah, super enjoyed. Hey, congratulations to you on a fantastic year that you guys had. Um, and I'm super excited for this. You know, I'm a little envious because I've always wanted to start, start a podcast on my own and start something like this. So I was, you know, I was when you reached out, I was like, let me, yeah, let me do that. I was, I watched almost all of your your previous ones. I was like, this is you're doing a really really cool thing. It's really cool to connect with and just hear different people. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, we're we're coaches, right? And it's a large part of what we do, but we're also people. Basketball is what we do. It's not who we are. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just cool connecting with different people and they're different different backgrounds so i'm super excited for you and i know you're gonna have a busy busy off season conducting hopefully a lot of these because i'm gonna be i'm gonna subscribe and i gotta i gotta need to get turn notifications on whenever they you post them because i gotta i gotta watch some more of these i really enjoy it but no i appreciate you having me on uh, thank you very much thank you so much you have a great day i right, appreciate it you too